praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome to today's edition of Talk Coffee Time with Onyai. Uh, we are live. We're both live from the same location. Pastor Onyi. Say hi to the people. Hello, everyone. So good to have you another Monday on the Coffee Time. Oh, please, if you can hear us. Okay, yes. We can actually hear us. So I just checked. Okay, they can hear us. So good evening, good evening. For everyone who's joined us today, we say thank you for keeping the faith with us every Monday. Indeed, we are glad that you're able to make time out of your busy schedule, um, your data and all that is required to just come online. We appreciate you. We do not take it for granted. So we welcome you, Coffee Tribe. Today we are wearing the Feet Time branded T-shirts. Yes, Coffee Time with Onyai. We're already ever proudly because for the next couple of Mondays, up until the end of June, we'll be wearing it because Coffee Time with Onyai is turning one. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So, Diani, thank you for tuning in. We see you. We see you. Thank you. We see you. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you. God bless you. So, like I said, for the next couple of weeks, we'll be wearing the Coffee Time branded T-shirt. Just thank God. It's been a wonderful year. If you remember, we started on the 29th of June, Monday, the 29th of June. In the thick of the pandemic, we kicked off coffee time with Onyai. And I'm so sad that today, in the next couple of weeks, you know, today we started to count down to the first year. I was just so grateful. So, Onyai, how do you feel? It's almost one year I'm doing this. Grateful, excited, and humbled by the whole experience. And I'm so grateful, personally. Thank you so much. Thank no, you no, so no, no, my pleasure. <laughs> Lagos, I'm so happy we're here together. I, I feel bad because you're going to be leaving in the next couple of hours, but we're just thankful that we've had the opportunity yeah. to just touch base with each yes. other for the past week, and we're indeed grateful to God. So, without much ado, we'll be going straight. We want to just heal everybody online. Susie, eBay, Gozi, Evange, Ozzy, we see you. We see you, Power um, Praise Machine. And all those who will just spend their time this one hour with us every day. So without much ado, today we're saying the woman in the mirror, the power of genuine self-examination. And you may wonder why are we discussing this um, kind of topic today? You know, I want to just quickly read um, 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, and it says, But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass, you know, the glass is the mirror, mm. the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Then there's another passage that also says this, and it was so amazing when we saw this passage. James. 1 22 to 25 the message version and i want everyone listening to just pay rapt attention to this it says don't fool yourself into thinking that you are a listener when you are anything but letting the word go in one ear and out the other act on what you hear those who hear and don't don't act are like those who glance in the mirror walk away and two minutes later, have no idea who they are or what they look like. God forbid. So today, you know, it goes on and on. If you read 25, it talks about when you catch a glimpse of the revealed counsel of God and the kind of free life you have. So today, what Pastor is laying out for us, the coffee tribe, is what it means to really see yourself in the mirror. She's not here to talk about the obvious things, or whether you look see yourself as fat, 
you see yourself as this or your self-esteem or not just your self-esteem she's actually coming to talk to us about what you truly see that mirrors everything that is the essence of your being over to you Onyai. why the woman in the mirror and why do you think there's a need for us to actually embrace the power of a genuine self-evaluation self-examination okay thank you Pastor and good evening everyone oh without self reflection examination you really can't know where you stand and who you are uh, but self-examination is done when a doctor looks at you examines you and says go and check yourself there's a self-examination it's done to make sure you're not sick it's done to make sure you don't have anything on you that you shouldn't have it's done to discover abnormal deposits in our systems medically yeah so if we if, we, if we're self-examining ourselves spiritually it means we're trying to find out what part of us is sick the part of us that needs help the part of us that needs treatment if i can use that word and so you know health self-examination there's also another one called self-reflection so when it has to do with um our spiritual life i think we need to use self-reflection but medically just to bring it home we, we we're using self-examination so that everyone will understand what we mean exactly. but when we have to talk about our spiritual lives um our character growth in human um capacity of whatever sort we talk about self-reflection and so what is self-reflection self-reflection is like looking into a mirror person it's not it's not it's wonderful true. how it has been captured like that it's like looking into a mirror and describing what you see. It is a way of assessing yourself, focusing on in and asking yourself certain questions. Who are you? What are your core values? Who do you want to be? So these three things actually guide the human being. It guides anybody. Who am I? Have I lost who I am? Do I still remember who I am? That scripture exactly. says, if you hear the word of God and you forget it, it's like one who looks into it and forgets about the image. Not only how much he or she looks yes. like. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So you need to, at every point in time, ask yourself, who am I? Who are you? Who, who am I? You know, have I forgotten who I am? Has life thrown so many lemons at me that I now become, see myself as sir? It's a sweet I used to be. Everybody put your name. You know, who are you? Do you still know who you are? Or have you lost your identity? God. Have you lost God. your identity? Praise God. So what are your core values? That's the next one. What are your core values? I don't want us to run ahead of our time. It's just the first three. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> she's asking the question. And, you know, the funny thing is that, you know, the thing is, when you ask somebody, some, women, some of us, you know, so many of us have been mm. there, what do you see in the mirror? You see it's a destructive, you know, it's self-deprecating things mm. they see. The last thing, bad thing that was said. The last them. bad thing that was said to them. And the last negative experience. Yes, the last negative experience. You know how they say you're as good as the last thing you did. Mm. And maybe the person only had bad experiences. And you have people who would want to define you by, by that your experience. You know, it's just like this guy in the Bible. Imagine they say blind Bartimaeus. Mm -hmm. So now that he was the saying, signs. what are they going to call him? The seen The seen Bartimaeus. <laughs> or that woman with the issue of blood. You know, they have a way, the world, the world has a way of defining you. And mm. if you're not careful, when you look into the mirror, you start, these destructive words start hitting you back. Mm. They start, so I believe that one of the things they're going to help us do today is to help us how to see ourselves differently. Mm. So our lives will become all the more productive, mm. you know. So go right to the next one you were talking about now. Okay, so but you know, for this thing, we can't help it. We'll have to talk about body image a bit. Of course. <laughs> because of that <laughs> magazine you were holding ah, earlier on. Yes, and I said, yes, no, 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 no. Yes. But I think we might have to do it. So go ahead. The next one. You were okay, about. so still talking on who are you, based on what you just said, Pastor Nene, concerning blind Bartimaeus okay. and the woman with the issue of blood. Isn't it funny that a lot of people rename people or baptize people with mm -hmm. their conditions and instead of saying God, that blind Bartimaeus, he had a name Bartimaeus so why did they say Bartimaeus the son of so 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 person who was blind who was blind 
So that means the whole um, community called him blind Martin. Oh, blind Bartimaeus, where is he? Oh, he has gone out to beg. Oh. Where is Bartimaeus? Oh, the blind Bartimaeus. Oh, he has gone out to beg. And you know, the one with the issue of blood, she had a name. Didn't she have a name? Person, this reminds me of one day, you know, <laughs> when you get married, and there's people now act like you don't have a name. <laughs> you get your money. Say, okay. You get your wedding card, and your name is there. I remember one years after my um after we got married, my husband and I, just one man will they'll come and say, Munye Benko, Munye Benko. I, I, I was like, What's going on? I have a name. I have my name is Onye. So I had to correct. I said, Please, my name is Onye. Is it that you don't know my name or what? That you just keep saying Munye Benko. Munye Benko is the wife of Benko, but I have a name. There's a name on my baptismal card, right? There's a name on my birth certificate. There's even a name. When my husband came to marry me, he said I came to marry Onyinye. So I have a name. But it's just, it's just to show us how human beings behave. Because I'm married to your cousin or what does not mean that I should lose my identity as Onyinye, right? I'm not saying that, I, of course, I'm not going to be disrespectful to my husband, but I'm saying that the humans have a way of boxing us into a place they want to keep us. Yeah. Probably they will see your com they, they see that oh you're a very confident person or something and they just want to look for a way to press, you know, yeah. put a button on to your lead. To just pigeonhole you. Yes. Them. Put yeah. a lead on you on you. And so we need to really at every point in time ask that person who am I? So I, that we I find know, out this, this thing you're saying here yeah, um, so many women they fall into that pattern. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you are defined when you see yourself in the mirror, because it's one thing for them to say it, mm -hmm. and it's another thing for you to see it mm -hmm. when you look into the mirror. Exactly. And you look into the mirror and you say, my worth is defined only by my husband. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody refers to me as his wife. Mm -hmm. Everybody. I know how you know it. That's one of the quickest way women lose their, their identity. Yes. And their identity. And I always love to say this. When God created them, how did he create them? Male and female. Male and female. And you know, even in, I just think about it, even in the Garden of Eden, they didn't really have an awareness of who they were in the fact that they could look in the mirror and see that they were naked. Mm -hmm. You know, something had to trigger it. Mm -hmm. So for a woman, the question I'm asking you now is, what do you think are the things that can trigger a kind of awareness in a woman that she looks in the mirror, and like the Bible said, says, when she walks away from the mirror, she can't even remember what she saw. And even if she remembered what she saw, it's not of a palatable sort. So she does what kind of things can trigger a woman to see what is not there? and see what she has been made to believe she is. What kind of situations can just... Well, I think the first thing is actually a person's environment, what you hear often, okay. and what you choose to believe. So there are two things. Um, the woman with the issue of blood was called the woman with the issue of blood. That means the people had seen her as somebody who obviously... Had, that was why she pushed to come to seek Jesus. And not, even before that, they said she went to so many physicians. She didn't give and up, did, you know? Exactly. She did not give up. So for someone who has forgotten who she is and has and is now walking in the in the uh, situation, the name that she has called wrongfully, right? Um, it's, it's an environmental thing. Sometimes it's your circle. Sometimes it's you losing who you are. And, you know, we really need to say these prayers we really need to say this prayer change my circle so if you find out you're in you're in a circle you're in the midst of people who just talk you down you need to ask god to send you a new a change of circle people who would come in and ignite in you the light that god has deposited the bible said iron sharpens iron so does a friend right so sharpen his friend so iron sharpen god should get you people who will take that blunt side of you and sharpen it and make it sharp so for anyone who has lost her identity, you just need a, a change of environment, a change of um, friends, a change of even church. Because there are some people that the churches they attend takes them deeper and deeper 
into that into self into self, self loathing self self it, it, it takes them um deeper into self and then you attend the church another church you change church and you find that that person starts becomes enlightened mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. entrance mm -hmm. of the word actually brings light then somebody goes to one particular church and there's no light all all they see is just whatever it is that they are they, they are told they, they they've lost a sense of who they truly are and you know it's just change change actually change you really need to change and you know one of the things about uh beholding yourself in the mirror after you've been in an environment where you are made to believe that you are worthless mm -hmm. is the thing about self-loathing you know one of the most terrible things is when you look in the mirror and you just hate yourself mm -hmm. you know you look in the mirror and you begin to believe the lies Exactly. about yourself you look in the mirror and you believe like no good can ever come out of this person that's why i would say sometimes you know you see you hear sometimes of how a woman leaves a marriage a way married where she was maybe living with a narcissist a married where she was going through so much pain and all that and she goes into another marriage and she begins to flourish i mean this is not condoning somebody moving from one marriage to the other, but you should understand that this is the reality mm. in which we live in. You understand? We Christians don't put our heads as ostrich, ostriches in the sand. We need to confront what is really happening out there. And before you know it, that person begins to bloom. Even in gardening, sometimes you need to transplant mm. from a soil that is not healthy and you, you, you or rather you bring that from a soil that is not healthy and you mm -hmm. transplant in another soil that's healthy. But the thing is this, even after you've been transplanted, you begin to embrace your worth. Mm -hmm. And that is where, that's what brings me to this next thing. Um, oh yeah, that's why I held it. I said, please don't go ahead of yourself. What do you think are the necessary core values mm -hmm. that I should have, you know? As, I mean, we say human beings, we're talking mm -hmm. about we're just women here, and it's just like uh, generalizing, you know, we made them women and man can go either way, but we always love to talk about our constituency. So even if a man is listening to us, you may just get something that will also make you run and make you even understand how to live with your wife better, you know? And if you're a single lady, you listen and you begin to know how to lay out your tracks, even as you move on. So what do you think are the necessary core values that i should have as a woman thereby when i behold myself in the reflection of the mirror i will see nene for who she is and not nene for who the world tells me i am okay so okay um the thing about self-reflection person is that you must is a process questions and answering them honestly the truth is that one person cannot have everything exactly it, it takes a process you know it's a progressive um pattern to become everything yes it, you don't just become everything at once you don't become everything in one day you don't become everything like the fruit of the holy spirit you don't have it all in one day you find that some people have five and they're they're, they're still struggling with the re the remaining four or some people have progressed into six but they're struggling with one and it's a progressive thing. So you must ask yourself questions and you must answer them honestly. What is it about me that needs to change? Am I overweight? We are going to get there because <laughs> when your weight troubles you, your confidence cannot come up. That's true. When your weight troubles you, person, you've lost weight. I know now. When your like, weight troubles it you was such a, a, woman it was such a big, man, it was a big, big thing for yes. me. And like, I'm glad we'll get to that because for that one, you really must have somebody who tells you one or two things. Yes. Like, no matter how you want to comfort yourself in the mirror, it's just like when you have people consistently telling a woman, you are a whore, you are this, you are that. There'll be somebody. Because maybe you didn't do those things, but mm. you begin to believe them, you know? So continue. I, I will get to that, that point. Okay, so you have to, uh, because if as a woman or even a man, a lot of men are insecure. It's just that they're in Africa and they cover it up with a lot of things. But what I'm saying is, if you look your, at yourself in the mirror, you don't like the way you look. It's time to answer those questions and say to yourself, I really don't like the way I look and it's affecting me. 
And you might find out that, oh, you look at your pictures when you were slimmer or when you were younger and you're like, I wish I could go back to this. A lot of people even stop shopping just because they've lost interest. They just don't like the way they look. And there's this saying, move, you're not a tree. So move, <laughs> go get help. You know, I, 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 I mean, it's not like it's this a paid this, but I told you about my coach, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I, told I, about I, my saw, I saw some of her, I saw some of her clips. Yes. You know, and I, I saw you, you, you actually needed that kind of push. Yes. Because you admitted to yourself, you know, having beheld yourself in the mirror. Yes. Yes. Like, I, I, I did. I didn't like this. Yes. And you did not, because you know this thing about the mirror thing we're talking about. You may see yourself and, ha, huh, I'm fat. I look this way. Feel sorry for yourself. Then you go, are you going to the ice cream shop and start eating? No, no, that's how. Mm -hmm. And probably because there's nobody who can who say to you, you know, like, ah, don't you think, don't you think? Mm -hmm. I told you about what happened where I was having breakfast with my husband somewhere and I taken one a pack of yogurts and just eating the yogurt. And the next thing I was now telling the waiter, excuse me, can I have another yogurt? And he said, no, no. You see this way to it. We could fight them together. Mm -hmm. So now the fact that I could, I was seeing that and I knew that. And also somebody who was being honest with me, mm -hmm. you know, and who was saying, okay, we're going to do this thing together. You know, I would help you in one way or the other. So what if this is somebody that perennially says to you, you are fat, you're fat. Just they use their sense to fat. Women will do it to each other. Am I lying? You're not lying. You're not lying, but like I said, you a day has to come where you know that you only have yourself. That's the truth. So it's not the truth. you don't let them you box with you with their negative yes. words. You know, I say I, I say this often. You don't come to God wearing spans. So I didn't say you people don't come to God wearing spans. It's just you and God, right? So you come to God and say, God, this is my weight. It's I really don't like it. And I've seen people before my coach now, Noni. Nonny, that's uh, my coach name is Nonny. Is Nonny. she going to pay that you're calling her name? Yeah, to Please, we're going to. So, Nonny, Nonny is such a fantastic Shout coach. <laughs> Shout out to Nonny. Bonds fat like no man's business. And I'm going to tell you. And she doesn't use them. <laughs> let me make she them laugh. She doesn't use all these fake, fake things. No, 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 no. no. My sister said, eh, let me make you put last. In fact, oh, you came and she saw the pack. I went to get something from Instagram. And you know what they wrote on the pack? What did they say on the pack? Say it, say let them hear. He said, when you take this, stay near the restroom. Stay near the restroom. And oh, I what? asked myself, why should somebody take something and sit near the restroom? That's not healthy. That's not right. Oh, God. That's not right. You see, so that's that's what we're talking about. You're going to take these things and you come back twice your size. So the truth is, like we were saying, that is not, it's not, it, I didn't say, um, let us go to God not wearing spans. Me. Go to God. No, don't go to God wearing spans. So it's, it has to do with you. And God, it's a personal thing. Not somebody convincing no, me. No, not somebody convincing me. Not somebody convincing me. Okay, let me let me just tell you something. I looked into the mirror one day and I knew I was adding weight. And I knew I was stressed. I was really stressed. Honestly, I was stressed. And But I just realized I'm not much of an eater. But I think my habits were just... Maybe I wouldn't eat throughout the day. My metabolism was getting slow. And I remember one day my husband said to me, ah, hmm. he just healed me. One kind of healing. I knew that's the healing one I've added with. <laughs> my husband healed the heal because he doesn't want me to get upset or something. <laughs> and then at that time I said, I won't lose weight. So this is what he says. He's, he's healing me like this. Be fast. My dear I'll sister, be fast. tell me who the weight now is on. It's not me. It's not me. So I, and I met different people but when i when i came in contact with my coach coach noni honestly she's great coach noni when i came in contact with coach noni there was something that that just i, I was said, delivered she yes she from something so. she, so i am very said. conscious of walking out you know on the road you see when people walk i tried tried it once i couldn't do more than once i don't know what it is about but there's just something that <laughs> yes but she taught me how to do my power walk in my sitting room, my sitting room, I did 12,000 steps. I couldn't believe it. Some, I, and that was my testimony. You know, and I, I at the point, I said, praying about my weight. I said, God, please help me. Send me somebody that would do the thing and, you know, I help don't know. But, and that was how she came. 
that was i just saw that and i said okay let me try her and that's it and that's i started losing weight if you look at me you can see my face has changed my structures <laughs> have changed i look better i look better Praise my weight is thinner so what are we saying you need to ask yourself those questions and answer them honestly please please so please. if you're not drinking enough water tell yourself i'm not drinking enough water you know, personally, there's something that says perfection is not the key; it's progression. Exactly. Do you know that's that's where I was I was going to. Perfection is not because the key; it's progression. You know why? You know why? You know why I was going to say something about that, and I'm glad you brought it up. You know, when we talk about uh, the the woman in the mirror, right, and the power of genuine self-examination. Mm -hmm. We have been given. A lot of images and what i'm talking about images i'm not just talking about physical images i'm talking about spiritual images spiritual symbols and people and i, I will just have to talk about the trending topic i know i'm saying this we know what happened there's this person who said somebody sang a song and she was trying to sing it and god cautioned her and all of that just imagine i'm not joking this is in the body of christ mm. when you are talking about the mirror the woman in the mirror if that young girl does not have this form of you know is not able to filter and does not understand that god spoke to her i hope you know that when a spiritual leader or whatever who is seems larger than life comes right in in the purview of the public and claim that that thing you said God said was not right. I hope you know it can make that young lady become self-deprecating. Yeah. I watched a video, I think yesterday she was in a program with Larry Terriba, and Larry Terriba was saying, he was going to say what was happening. She was begging him. This girl, I mean, if you compare where she was singing that song and you could just practically see the glory of God emitting from her, that girl had shrunk. I am not joking. She had shrunk. Tell me that girl will look in the mirror. What do you think she will see? She's been called all kinds of names. And before that lady said what she said, people have been listening to that song. They've been experiencing the presence. Will it stop the experience of the presence? Or should, we be, should the girl bother about how she feels? Because she looks like a defeated girl. If you had to speak to that young lady now, Beholding herself in the mirror, only what will you tell, tell her? Okay, so this is what I'll say to her, and I'm saying to everybody. And I pray she gets to listen to me. This is what I'm going to say to her, and I say to everybody that works on the surface of this earth. See, the reason why you need self-reflection is this. I'm going to read it. The better you know yourself and your deepest leanings, the better you can understand and help others too. Hallelujah. So the truth is, as long as you walk on the surface of this earth, someone who is intimidated by you will talk down on you. Hmm. someone who is int intimidated by you will shoot arrows at you, just like David. The moment David killed Goliath, Saul became intimidated by David, and Saul threw a javelin at David. Did David decide not to take his place as king because of Saul? No. Hmm. He treaded carefully. He was focused. He knew he had been anointed to be king over Israel. And so wherever he found himself, he emerged as the anointed one. So he took men who were who amounted to nothing, trained them, and they became the it best became of men. became something. All I have to say to everybody is this. You can't lose who you are. We were talking about core values. In self-reflection, you must know your core values. If you don't know your core values, you're going to get missing. Because the world is going hey. to try to define you per minute, per second, per hour. So what are your core values? You must sit down and write them down. What is your core value? I know my core values. I sat down and I did that a long time ago. And so if anything is taking me from away from my core values, I flee. What are your core values? I need us to do that assignment. And if you can quickly drop yours, we'll be very grateful. Just drop yeah. it. Think about it. That's what true. are your core values? I know my core values. My core value is love. I love love. Like love I'm talking about is not, is not sexual love. No, no, no. Love no. is true love. And because I'm married, of course, sex is important. So that must also be an important ingredient in marriage. But I'm talking about love. A situation, I love truth. I love truth. Like, I don't even want to be your friend and I can't be myself. That's so. That's, that's what I mean by truth. I should be able to say, my son, I should be able to say to Nonye, even I say I don't, they add with. And I won't feel bad. I'm like, exactly. I don't add with. Ah, make her go check her, make her go check her. And that doesn't mean I'm paranoid. It's like she understands that I'm on a weight loss, on a weight loss journey. So if she sees me, 
next week. And she says, oh, when you say, I know, then I know that maybe I'll slack. I maybe I'm not. Up. Um, yes. And you know what? It will not let you feel, oh, she's saying this because she wants to put Precisely. Down. Precisely. She's saying this because uh, she thinks she's better than I am. Precisely. Because, you see, um, this thing we're talking about, let me go back to that first Corinthians that we read before. For those of you that were not here. Second Corinthians, sorry, Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians 3 18. It says, But we all with open face beholding in a glass, that's a mirror, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of God. You know what Paul was doing there? Paul was exposing people to the life of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He was telling people to behold themselves and decide this is where I am, I am at. I can be better. I can be. Paul was not preaching himself. Mm -hmm. But when you surround yourself with people that preach themselves, you will define yourself by their standards. Mm -hmm. That when you look at yourself in the mirror, you will say, I am not excellent enough. I am not good enough. And you forget that the God who created you, created you for a purpose. Yes, you know, you know, you just, you know, the third point, you, know, you just took it off my, my mouth. The third point is, who do you want to be? Praise so, the Lord. Who do you want to be? Who do you want yes. to be? And you know, it now begs the question, and that is where I really want you to speak, say something on you. You know, she just said it. It leads to who do you want to be? Because mm -hmm. remember, Paul preaching, preach people to Christ. And we're supposed to conform to Christ. In everything we're doing, we're trying to look like Christ. You are not trying to look like Pastor Nene. Yeah. You are not trying to look like Pastor Oni. Mm -hmm. We only bring the message of Christ to you. Then you begin to decide, like you always say, mm -hmm. if you've been on the coffee time with us, that's 29th of June makes it one year of an awesome time with this lady who decided to put herself out there, you know, by creating a coffee tribe and just speaking her mind as it is in the ways of the Lord. You know, if you are out there, she has just said it now. The question you now have to ask yourself is, or realizing the question or a statement, just start telling yourself, I to, I must stop confusing what I look like mm -hmm. and who I am. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, what we look like is based on what people tell us. Yes, Praise God. Hallelujah. So, like what you read, you said, it leads to who do you want to be. Person, I just want us to read some people's um, core values. Yes. Okay, quickly. Yeah. Um, Sandra. If you're out there, if I, we said we're going to do this, I, I kind of just, because <laughs> this is a very passionate point for me. So, um. But when you requested that you put up your core values, so I'm going to start putting what you think your core values are. Uh, the queen of love herself, Winnie Morganson, she says her core value is, I love love, oh, that's excellent. And, oh, and of course, she is. says she loves peace as well. Beautiful. Beautiful. Then, um, can we take it one after the Yes. One? So it's now that you, 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 you say you love love, honestly, you know what we had wished there? Eh? was that if you want to, because you still have quite, okay, we have so much time. We have the house to ourselves. <laughs> so this program can go on and on and today. So if you want to come up and tell us a bit of your core values, just put it there, something there, then we'll drop the link mm -hmm. for you to click so you can speak to us, you know, and speak to the people. So if you really want to come on screen to discuss your core values, you know, it's not every day we have uh, Onyai <laughs> being be able to sit with her. Mm. Okay, so, you know, um, our sister Winnie here says, um, I love peace. I she love said, peace. I love love. We, said, yeah, uh, we all love. She was acknowledging that okay, our okay, love, I love, love, love okay. I know you love, lo you love love and you love peace. And you know that question leads to another. It says, what are your core, core values and who do you want to be? So if you love peace, you know what it means? It means you're a peacemaker. You would want to be a peacemaker. And what are the qualities of a peacemaker? And, you know, the prayer of St. Francis really captures it. He said, Lord, make me an instrument of peace. So this is who you should, this is what you should manifest. He's the one that did that song. Yes, St. Wow. Francis. So St. Francis of Assisi, that's the prayer. Mm -hmm. If you say, I love peace, this is what it should be. You should be a peacemaker. And that prayer captures it. That's what you should manifest. He said, make me an instrument of peace. So you should be an instrument of peace if you love peace. 
where there is hatred, let me sow love. In an environment where, environment where there is hatred, you are to sow love. And little wonder, that, I'm not surprised you love love, Sister Winnie, because I see what's happening here. A, a, a woman of peace is a woman of love. So where there is hatred, you are to sow love. So these are when when we reflect on this, you you then you know where to stretch. Because the truth is, you may love peace and you may love love, but you are in an environment of hatred. So the question is, what do I do when I love love and I love peace do you and I am in an environment of hatred? Do I allow the hatred to snuff up, transform me to who I am not? Do I become a byproduct of my environment? Do I stand tall and say, I? I'm a lover of peace. Where there is hatred, I should plant love. It says where there is injury, there should be pardon. Where there is doubt, there should be faith. So where there's injury, if you have been hurt, if you have been damaged, if you have been scarred, you should ask God for healing. Where there is injury, let me bring what? Where there is, um, where there is, Lord, make my instrument of peace. Where there is I hatred, let me sow love. Yes. Where there is injury, let me bring pardon. You know where there is thing, doubt. Right? So where yeah. there is injury, you should bring pardon. Whoever um, hurts you, you should forgive. That's how you stretch yourself as a Christian woman. Where there's injury, let me bring pardon. Where there is doubt, let me bring faith. There are people that are in environments where people have made a mess of Christianity. They're asking you, why are you praying? Why are you going for fellowship? Why are you going to church? When Nigeria, people have a lot of things to say about Nigeria. And they have asked, why are you going to pray for Nigeria? They've said it. They've yes. Said it. They've said so it. they said, where there is doubt, let me bring faith. Where there is despair, let me bring hope. We are in the situation where people around us have lost hope, Pastor Nene. People are saying, oh, Nigeria. Yeah, some people are clamoring for their own. Oh, no, Another person, but you, what is tell you? Is you are oh, or uh, I don't know what they are, whatever <laughs> name. You cannot stand in this nation. The name of Oscar. So, where there is despair, let me bring hope. So that is what we are called to do. As women of love and peace, where there is despair, let me bring hope. Are you bringing hope? Praise God. Where there is despair, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, let me let bring, bring light. light. I know the funny thing, this thing you're saying. And where there is sadness, let, let me, bring, me joy. bring joy. And Pastor Nene, sorry to, let me no, just no, continue. continue. I want you to finish the your second of part of that prayer says, Lord, may I not seek to be consoled as to console. So what it means is, I'm not giving out what I'm receiving. It's, it's a powerful thing. If we understand it, we'll get it. I am not to give out what I'm receiving. I'm to give out what I ought to give out as a Christian. What God has directed oh, me to give out. So may I not seek to be consoled as to consoled. So you may not be consoled. But as a lover of peace and a lover of it. God, you give consolation even to that enemy. Praise God. You know what you just said now? You just captured the whole thing. So it's like this, right? Let's assume this is a mirror. I had a mirror right in front of me. We're talking about looking, the woman in the mirror. Mm -hmm. And I look in the mirror. And I see hate being thrown at me. But I will not hate you back. Yes. I will love you. Yes. I look at the mirror. I see despair. I see despair. Mm -hmm. I'll bring joy. And you know, when you start doing that, you are, you are, you are, you are getting to look more like Christ. Mm. You are in a place. People call you all kinds of names. You just set your face as a flint. And you do what you ought to do. You are doing good. Like we didn't say peace. You are, doing, you are being peaceful, peaceful. And people are like, ah, look. All these peace overtures, they will not work. It's not your business. Mm -hmm. You don't become a lover of war. Yeah. You continue in peace. So it says, it says, may I not so much seek to be consoled as to console. May I not seek to be understood as to understand. See, my sisters, this thing is not easy. It is a progressive work. But you must decide to, to, to be who God wants us to be. You know, you, you know why this love and peace, it captures mm -hmm. what every other person is writing. Mm -hmm. People say they, we they have love, who say, respect. Who say, um, um, my core value is true love, honesty, truth, and respect. Yes, Sister Sandra yes. says true love, truth, and respect. Um, I think um, Suzanne said, so I love peace on, and uh, tranquility. Yes, I want you to talk about respect because truth, um, love, honesty, truth, and, res and okay. love, honesty, and truth, they are like part of mm -hmm. the peace package. But we're talking about respect here. You love respect as your core value. Where people incessantly disrespect you, that is what you see in the mirror. What then do you do in that instance? You know where this prayer answers it all. So the, the other part of it said, for it is in giving that we receive. The question is, when you're disrespected, do you give respect? You know, as Christians, that's what we're called to do. It's a difficult one. I'm telling you people, 
But it's something we must, until you get to a place where you say, this is me. If you have a core value of love, irrespective of what How you are disrespected, you, you will yes, love. Yes, you will give love. And in your giving love, people don't know what love is, will experience will love learn and you. learn how to love through you. Praise God. You become the Bible that somebody gets to read. And that make you, that doesn't make you a fool. No, 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 no. It doesn't make you a fool. It means that when you're put in a situation where you should act, what you manifest is love. What you manifest is what you carry, right? You won't say, um, oh, this person get to me. I'm going to reciprocate in that way. You are just going to manifest what it is you carry. Values should be innate in you, right? Exactly. And so when, when you open a box that contains a present, it is what that box carries that you will get. Praise God. You won't be gifted um, the gift in another box. In so, another box. The, so the question, what is in your box? If you say it is love, it is honesty, it is truth, it is respect. When but I open your box, I should, I should feel same. love. When I open your box, I should feel love. When I open your box, I will see truth. When I open your box, I will see respect. And let me tell you something. Honestly, let me tell you something. You know, Sister sister Susan, you said, you said you're brutally honest. I'm going to teach you today what the Holy Spirit taught me about being brutally Wait, honest. Wait, don't rush. Don't go too fast yet. I want us to finish step by step. No, this is a very passionate thing. This is, Pastor is very, very passionate about this. I just want to say some of those, because laugh a bit. She said, whatever you put in your box, that's what you will see. You know, there was this um, wedding present, did you see it? That was shaped like a bicycle, wrapped like a bicycle. <laughs> no, it's all about social media. Did and as they unwrapped it, saw that it was mop stick. Two buckets. Let me see this. Is it? Mop no, stick. No two buckets. <laughs> Not buckets, it's two like bats. Mm -hmm. Mop stick, bats, bats together. And it was wrapped like a bicycle and it, the person thought it was a bicycle and as she, she was talking i just remembered you know you say when you put you bring you put sometimes your package can be wrapped in deception yes that's that that means you're not you're not you've not done this thing now that's an, that is a deceptive presentation you, because that's the thing what would you say about deceptive presentation because they have they do happen they do happen but so we're here to you, hold ourselves accountable so that's what i'm saying I'm, that's what i'm saying now that when it's deceptive what do you do so that's where i wanted to just think give about what it. you carry okay. if you find out there's a part of you that is deceptive you know the I, we said it before we're not we don't we're not aiming for perfection progression progression yeah because progression means i did two steps yesterday and i i'm doing a third one today perfection mm -hmm. means your tablet 200 million steps and then you're doing it it can happen <laughs> it's progressive by the time you do five steps today tomorrow you push you do five thousand eight hundred the third day six thousand and then your body gets used to it so that's progressive um uh, movement mm -hmm. so if you find out that there's a part of you you know we're talking about looking in the mirror so let's yeah. not look at other people here i want us to look at ourselves Myself, yeah everybody evaluate yourself today and say me the woman looking at the mirror what part of my life do i need to stretch what part of my life do i need to alter what part of my life do i need to change what part of my life do what is god calling for calling me for, to transform, me to transform yeah. we talked about this prayer the prayer of saint francis of assisi he said lord help me that not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand to be loved as to love for it is in giving that we receive that is the only that's the law of Christianity that does not matter the one of, of the world. The one of the world they give you, give me, I give you. God. Do me, I do you. God, God no go back. Even in Igbo, they have it. As if you give me, I will feed you. So if you come to my event and you give me a gift, if you spray me, I will feed you. That is the law of the world. Because it happens even in marriages. You will yes. line, line up to give Yes, your if you don't give, give lots of in here. Uh -huh. <laughs> so in Igbo, they say, so you know but the law of christ says it is giving that you receive hallelujah it is in pardoning that you are pardoned and it is in dying that you're brought to eternal life so dying is not even physical death alone it's dying to your flesh dying to those habits that you know you may think make you you but if you look at the bible it's not that is not what it should be so i want to talk about uh, sister Suzanne. they said honest. i am brutally honest and you know we need to be cautious about that statement being brutally honest 
um, growing up, I'm somebody who can, I would, if you're looking for the truth, my classmates in secondary school, they'll tell you, if you want to know the truth, go to Onye Naze. Then Onye Naze, now I'm married. Go to Onye Naze. I will tell you, I said, I won't even miss what. I'll look at it, what are people talking about now? This thing is yellow. And everybody will they'll, they'll do like I said, why would everybody, everybody who went to my secondary school, that is my classmate, will tell you the same thing till tomorrow. So if you want to know the truth, go to Onye Naze. And then I started growing. And the one day the Holy Spirit called my attention to it. And those people said to me, there is a how of saying things. There is a where of saying things. There is a what. What are you saying? That day I froze. The Holy Spirit said to me, yeah, how do you say these things? Where do you say where them? Where do you say them? When do you say them? And what? who do you say them to? What do you mean they have? And he was talking to me about my husband. And you know me, brutally honest girl. Uh-uh. Me, Onye doesn't know how to lie. I'll tell my baby, I cannot even lie. Yo. I can't even lie. I was feeling hot. I can't lie. I will tell you as it is. That day, the Holy Spirit called me, saying, Babe, he said, Sir, where are you going? He said, There is a how. If you want this man to hear you, you will know how to say it to him. You will know when to say it to him. You will know where to say it to him. And you will know what to say. Hmm. And so, the God took me to Jeremiah 33, verse 3. And I opened my Bible and I saw it. Ask of me and I shall show you great and mighty things which you do not know. See, when you say you're brutally honest, there are certain things you do not know. And in your ignorance, but in your eyes, you see it as wisdom. You unleash those words. And if you say something to a man or a woman and it, wounds and them. it hurts them, it wounds they them. Have wounded God. They have wounded God. You have erred. And so God started teaching me. So I made that prayer. Lord, please teach me greater mighty things which you don't know. So God started teaching me how to speak to my husband. Because honestly, if you, as what I said is the truth. Though. I did not lie. We are not quarreling. But God started teaching me how to speak to my husband. God started teaching me when to say things to him. He will tell me, Onye, don't say it now. I know you're upset, but don't say it now. I said, I shouldn't say it. He said, no, don't say it now. Wait until he has eaten. Let him sleep. I'm telling you people. He will not say, okay, you can wake him now by 12. God will tell me, oh, and me now, Pastor Nene, then, and my, my mind, I'll be like, Holy Spirit, I'm listening to you, say, oh, yeah, keep listening, but don't wake him up, don't tell him now. Because your body, your body will be doing you. You know me, I don't know how to sleep with anger. That's the truth, I don't know, I don't, I can't take it, I can't take something to tomorrow. I'm like, let's sort it now, let's sort it now. But God brought it to my attention. He said, if you say something to this person, you hurt the person, you've hurt somebody. That means, what you're saying will not have any effect. And what is effective communication? Effective communication is when what you are communicating is received by the hearer in the manner you want them to, want receive, them to receive it. it. So if Pastor Nena wants me to change and she says it to me in a negative, in a harsh way, as in she's brutally honest, and I don't receive that word, Defensive. all I get is pain from her words. That's not effective communication. And you know, and you know for me, um, this thing, I, I, I would not understand, or we might probably not understand the context in which I'm, as soon as he's saying it, but that's the truth. Because one thing I have learned, I used to be that kind of a person as well. I used to pride myself in being brutally honest. But the thing about it is, you know, there were some words, you can't use the word brutal with honesty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People who are dishonest are the ones who are brutally dishonest. Because <laughs> there is, yeah, you have a they motive. See it and then they you, just have, you have a motive to, to lie. It. You have a motive to lie. Mm -hmm. And your lie, eh? It's to wound. It's just like when you see somebody is bleeding and you, you say, oh, the person wasn't bleeding. Then you are dishonest. Mm -hmm. And if you don't say that, that person will bleed to death. Yeah. You know? So for me, honesty is beautiful. But like what I used to say, and I know I, 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 I always say this to young people. Sometimes very difficult to get through to adults. There's a reason God said to us, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Mm. This thing helped me. Because if he says, if you love me, you keep my commandments. You don't just jump up and start going to keep it. Mm. The commandments person A is struggling with is different from the commandments person B is struggling with. Mm -hmm. So what is there? Onya will famously say, God help my ministry. Ah. So for as much like a, 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 a tribe member, uh, Susie, by all means, it's good to be honest. I know I'm not surprised by your profession. You can just give it as best, 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 best. But the thing is, be honest. 
but don't term it as being brutal because honestly, if you look at it, you might not be brutally honest. I'm sure when you speak the truth, um, Susie, you don't speak it to wound people. So what you're probably doing here is a reprogramming of that thing you think you do. Yeah. So Susie, you are honest, but you're going to expunge the brutal part of it because when you're brutally honest, you know how some people just, everybody they talk to cry. You know? God, there's somebody that posted something here. Let me put it up. And it's, it's really touched me. Nena Ogoji, God bless you for this. She says, yes, Jesus was full of grace and truth. So truth needs to be a grace. grace. Beautiful. You know, apparently, that's why I'm saying that. Um, it was the context in which Susie put it because Susie has explained to us here that brutally in this regard does not strict to sense of brutality. Thank you. Good. Yes. So beautiful. Lawyer. Um, lawyer. Our Susie. lawyer. Uh, our lawyer. Hey, hey. <laughs> so that's it. Thank you. I'm glad you listened because this is it. You are saying in terms of you're not going to call, um, you're not going to do shades of gray. It's either white or black. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So it's but more personal. You know, you know, uh, I want to say something. You know, there are a lot of us watching. Yes. And so every everything comes up. Um, I, I believe everything comes up for a reason. Now she has explained it as many of us on this. Oh, yes. What she means. So, yes. Susie, Annie, thank you very much for putting it in perspective. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, she's even yeah. said it again. Yes. Without this is it. Favor. Yes. Beautiful. This is it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because there's nobody that will expect you. Like I will say, I'd rather err on the side of pleasing God. And that is speaking truth without fear or favor. Great. That's why you're a lawyer. Thank you for putting the perspective. So, Pastor, when you continue, I saw someone else who said something about um someone has said something. Okay, Linda Chese. So we've dealt with trust, we've dealt with mutual respect, mm -hmm. we've dealt with um in a way, integrity, what do you think? Mm, well, integrity is who you are for real, for real, right? Yes, Integrity yes, yes. means um, keeping to your word, um, standing by your word. Yes, your yes. Acting yes, according yes. to your word, no, yes. No, no. You know, the Bible says, let your yes be yes. That's and let your, so you don't need to say, I swear to Almighty God. No, it's not necessary. <laughs> it's not necessary. Exactly. Exactly. Let's say how people do it. I swear to Almighty No, 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 no. The Bible says, let your yes be yes. Or some so people swear their children. Use their children to swear. You know? Integrity, God will help us. We said it's a progressive thing. So tonight we're looking in the mirror and we're trying to, after tonight's topic, we'll go and say, ah, where do I need to stretch? Is it my love work? Is it my integrity work? Is it my honesty work? Is it my trust work? Can you be trusted? Can somebody trust you? Can you trust and can somebody trust you? You know, something else, Pastor Neza, a lot of people have been. Um, betrayed and so they've lost the ability to trust people yeah and the truth is if you can't trust somebody you find out that you're starting the vicious circle all over again and you might end up saying oh i you know if trust is your core value and you can't trust then it's there's a problem you need to go and work on your trust um level trust ratio yes you need yeah. to work on it because that means you have not healed from the last betrayal so that's why healing is essential so we need to understand that Integrity means let your yes be yes, let your no be no, be truthful at all times, stand by whatever it is and you, always you say. Um, um, Susie, let me just drop something now to the truth. When you your know, actions match your words. When we're younger, we say, do as I say. As, as I, I say. say. Do as I do. <laughs> no, now. I know. That, say, that, that's do it. Do as I say. Do as I do. You will see somebody say, don't do this to your husband. Don't do Have you heard of that something when a woman says she's not going to do this, this and that? She and her husband were not going to go into the their pastor's house and they had them <laughs> quarreling and fighting. For women who advise other women, I won't take it. I won't take it. Ooh, they're taking worse. I won't take it. And they're taking it. So look in the Dead. mirror and like when you said, gauge your own self, gauge your pace. We're not here today to talk about the next person. It's us. That's yeah. why you're dropping your core values. We're talking about them. Mutual like, respect. When you talk That's about, good. yes, mutual respect is good. And uh, it's it's a it's a good core value to behold, yeah. to have and all that. So mutual respect is good, but the first thing we should look at when we're talking about respect is self-respect. Mm -hmm. You must respect yourself enough to respect the next person. To respect the next person and also to gauge what kind of this thing is thrown at you. Mm -hmm. You know, most people would say um their core value is respect. But they open up themselves to disrespect. Mm. 
out of fear, out of um, not wanting to seem um, recalcitrant or anything. So what will you say to somebody who may have respect as a core value, not necessarily Linda, just because she talked about respect and I just, just clicked, mm -hmm. would have um, respect as a core value and yet you know, it still gives respect even when they're disrespected because mm -hmm. I, I have experienced that personally. Mm -hmm. But I want you to just this thing, and if maybe you have to say something, I will, but I want you to just tell us what such a person should do. She's beholding herself in the mirror, but she's feeling, I won't lie to you. I used to think I love respect, but I look at myself in the mirror and I wonder, God, the new year, what is this? Okay. What is this? So, personally, I remember one day um, I was somewhere years ago, and the Holy Spirit, Spirit said to me, Humility and disrespect are two different things. Humility. And disrespect are two, two different things. So a lot of people don't even know the difference between humility and disrespect. The Holy Spirit brought it to my attention and gave me examples of what disrespect was, how I was being disrespected, and told me that Onye, this situation, that situation, that situation, that's you being humble. But you see this thing that's happening now, you're being disrespected, and I expect you to leave this place. I heard it clearly. And that was the day he said to me, you are the daughter of the king. The daughter of the king does not bow to slaves. So let me tell you something. There's a difference between disrespect and humility. You may be humble enough to take whatever it is. You know, you're humble enough to come to a space, you wash plates. That's you. That's out of your humility to sweep, to help out. But the moment you're disrespected, you, may be able to, you should be able to identify it. The reason somebody gives respect and gets disrespect is because they have not seen the difference between humility, their humble nature, and when they are being disrespected. They can't separate it. And if the Holy Spirit did not call it to my attention, Pastor Nene, I would have gone deeper into that thing called disrespect and lost the essence of my presence. That's, that I, was, that's I, was, I was going to because when it's, 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 it's like a bat, uh, uh, what do you call it? A battling ram, mm -hmm. understand? It starts small by small. It's, it's, it's subtle, you understand? And soon enough, that's what we talked about, believing what you behold in the world. Mm -hmm. Somebody who consistently faces that might begin to think, have feelings of worthlessness. Mm -hmm. Feelings of worthlessness. Mm -hmm. Like I tell people, when you talk about this thing, I, I always also say humility is not stupidity. It's not. And you see, humility is actually submission. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because you have the power. But you know that I do this because... So what you're saying now is this. If I have respect as my core value, mm -hmm. I expect to be respected in return. Mm -hmm. But where I continue to receive disrespect, because, you know, I can't give disrespect back. There are some times I, I like people to know if someone is throwing this thing at you and you keep on doing the good, doing the good, doing the good, at a point you begin to be worn out. And corrupt. Oh, that's the truth. No, and I'm corrupted. sorry, no, it's evil communication. Corrupt good corrupt manners. Good so manners. you move. So you, you need to. You because move. even in the Bible, when Jesus said, if you go there and you're not accepted, what do you do? You leave. Not just leave. After you leave, dust you your feet. Dust your feet. Mm -hmm. You move. So that's one thing. I'm saying, a woman, when you look at yourself in the mirror and what you're seeing, Looking back at you, it's a woman who has been totally disrespected. There's a reason why they call it demand respect. So I just hope somebody has taken that into um, cognizance this evening. So, yes, people love order. People love hard work. Ha! When you are, when you, when you love hard work, don't be a slave master. To other people, we know you now. You like to work, work, work. Linda loves work. She loves work. So when you over She's to a you. woman of excellence. Yes, she loves working. Um, I also want um to bring to our attention a lot of women go through that person in a, a group of friends and then they just look at one and she's the one everybody whenever she comes they must find something to laugh at her for it happens it happens they yeah. will just look at her shoe she and then come. that person might just not understand that she's been disrespected do you know it's joke they think the joke and, and no she lives there sad she lives there sad so oh not, like, not that she thinks it's a joke she she but knows she anything. but she lacks the audacity to change her circle to them calling out I'm calling you out, that woman. Have the audacity to change your circle. 
have the audacity to change your circle. See, the truth is, Pastor Nene, there's something and about you. When people pick on you, there's something you carry they don't carry and they're threatened by. And the reason they pick on you is so that you will not wear rise you, from they the ashes. They, they wear you like out. a phoenix and then know your worth. They wear you out. And again, let me just say something quickly here. We're talking about the uh, woman in the mirror. You know, I was saying the power of, you know, genuine self-examination. Lady, the Bible tells us you are fearfully mm -hmm. and wonderfully made. Nobody has the right to decide what reflection should look back at you. Mm -hmm. You must. You see, and the thing about this thing, I'm going to, that's, after this thing, go back and read that first Corinthians. And the other one, there's this one you always talk about Romans. Let me put it up. Yeah, when we when we finish with this, yeah, this will now do them as closing tea. Okay. <laughs> no, no, you don't need to hear it's coffee. Coffee. So you know, closing coffee. This Irish thing about um disrespect. Remember that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. When God was talking about you are a royal priesthood, he didn't pick some names mm. and put the tag of royal priesthood on them. That's why I have, I, I have a friend. I'm sure she's watching this thing. The amount of audacity she has. You know? So I want a woman to begin to behold yourself. Oh yeah, I ask the question. When you look in the mirror, you can say to us here, when you look in the mirror, what do you see? In one word, right? Mm -hmm. Or in a sentence. Mm -hmm. if, you look, if you look in the mirror, what do you see? Um, let's see. I'll put that up for you. Yeah, the, yeah, the question and answer. Okay, because you love others, they see you as a disrespectful person. Please throw some light on this. Yeah, how do I do? This is the personal one. Oh, over to you. Okay, because you love order. How do you execute that? How do you? Hello, Esosa. Welcome. Um, because you love order, how do you dish those orders? You, you we talked. Don't know if you were here when we talked about how to say, when to say, who to say to, and what to say. So, how do you? Um, this, what's, this, your what's your attitude? your attitude? What's your language? Your language. What's your language? Yes. You know, personally, I use this as a, an example all the time. Leave I say, love. I say to people, um, um, what's the, the, there's this thing everybody says. Um, what's that word? What's that word? Everybody, people say it often. Salutation is not love. No, no, no. That's <laughs> not it. <It's, laughs> you know, you know the, this thing. Oh my God! Please, please, please help me. Okay, it's it's about formal and informal language. It's yeah. a formal language. Okay, so you can tell somebody shut up, and you can say, please, um, can you be silent? I need to talk. It's the same thing. Shut up, and please, can you be silent? You have a word. The conveyance no. of one. Exactly. Is. So if you say shut up, people can fight. But if you say, please, can you be silent? I need so to, I talk. to talk. Now. The person oh. will give you audience will keep quiet, and there'll be no reaction. So the question is, what language do you use when to execute to execute your order? Yes, to execute. Yeah. And how do you communicate th those words? Why do they feel you're disrespectful? If somebody feels you're disrespectful when you execute, when you um, when you dish out orders, then you need to check your language. So how are you how are you give you say, hey, get up, go there, or you say, please, can you kindly do this? That's the same thing. Can you kindly move the seat? Please, can you shut the door? Please, can you do? If you use, please, thank you. The magic words. The magic words. And please, thank you. You find that, that people will not um, struggle with you, and you know, when it comes there, to command. There's, there's one other thing I want to say about order. There are some people by their nature, eh? They don't suffer fools at all. Mm -hmm. They just, I, 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 I used to be that kind of person. It's just, those of you that know me here can confirm it. I'm like, I want it done. I want it done. I want it done. I want it done. But you need, you need to get to a place, dearest, that you know that. Not everybody has the capacity mm -hmm. that you have. And if you want to be seen differently in giving orders, you have to start having a spirit that is nurturing. So when you are giving the order on what to do, it's more like you are teaching. That's a, a, a strategy mm -hmm. I've learned over time. Like you don't tell somebody, move this plate from here to here or something like that. You pick the first plate and say, this will be a nice place to keep this plate. Mm -hmm. Just can you hand them over to me here? And before you know it, before you know it, it is only when having like, oh, you said something, she said, how are you saying it? Where are you saying it? Mm -hmm. When are you saying it? And mm -hmm. all that. When you have checked all those boxes, you know, you now know whether you are doing it right or wrong. Mm -hmm. So just try. You've heard it differently. Now, we've just said this. 
try these different options and see if they work for you. You can actually talk to uh, Onyai privately later about what and what kind of, you know, context mm -hmm. and all of that. But be sure that we're saying from today, we're reprogramming things that will make us see ourselves differently. That, in fact, the aura around you, nobody can help but be endeared to you. Yeah. Nobody can help but be endeared to you just because you have decided to have a mind shift. So there's a next question now. Is it a question or a statement? No, she was just... Um, she says, okay, comment. Very, very true. true. Scripture says a word aptly spoken is like apples of gold. Now, then now, God, you're ah, she's a Bible student. You don't know are her. Uh, uh, parents and uh, are you yeah, a Sunday school teacher? Yeah, all uh, <laughs> Bible people. So, 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 I would like to just um screen Read grab this thing, or so. copy what um we just see. put on the um screen that Nenna said, and I think even I will also take this. Yes, I. Do. I will also take take this. Yeah, um, so Susie so says something here. She says, "I have learned over the years from experience. Everyone is not functioning exactly." You're not on the same frequency. Yes. I thank God for Pastor Ye here who, who taught it to me severally. She will just mm -hmm. shake her head and say, Pastor Ye, it's not like that now. Mm -hmm. The person may not know it. You just assume yeah. that they know it. So I think it's another part of being humane. So when we look at ourselves in the mirror, we don't come out looking very like um, we're, we're beasts, mm -hmm. you know? We're beasts. We, 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 are not, we don't end up being like people who do not have any sense of, you know, compassion, which is something you're always pushing for yeah. here on the coffee time. You know, the Bible said Jesus was all things to all men. Yeah. He met an adulterer. He didn't condemn her. He met uh, Nicodemus. Nicodemus did self-reflection. Imagine how the adulterer felt when she looked in the mirror later. Yes. And wow. because Jesus loved her, she knew Did he she allow was... them stone her? Yes. He looked at the woman at Samaria, five bobo, no marriage. He did not abandon her. He said, except I, I am the I am the living water. Mm -hmm. I'm the resurrection and the life. He said it to her. He looked at uh, who again? He looked at the, he looked at Peter who denied him, and he called him back to his position. He didn't he didn't forsake he said, Peter. The devil wants to see you, but yes, I, I pray for, for you. you. And even after he resurrected, Pastor Nene, he still you know something that he the angel told them go to the go and tell the disciples I'm Peter. So God even sent the angel. To say to Peter, tell him I've not abandoned him, I've not forsaken him. Can you imagine him what some people have said to Peter today? Ah, please, people should let leave Peter there. Oh. He denied me. Let's take the other one. Let's take the other Let's one. Let's make John the cornerstone. I say traitor. And that's that looks today when this stretch has just been awesome. Mm. I think one of the things that should make me look in the mirror is if I really recognize myself for who god made me exactly and if, if if we have changed pattern of form from who god made has made us or he's trying to make us we have to go back let's go back to the beginning go back ask We're, those questions who am i what are my core values who do i want to be all those questions we are going be? to ask ourselves and i want you to speak on something mm -hmm. this in the world in your words. Your, we almost missed that. This is something she always likes to say. God's will versus your why. Okay. When you look at yourself in the mirror, God's will versus your why. Oh, this is this is awesome. I I I I, I stumbled on a uh, on a teaching today, and when um, this topic came up, I saw it in the middle of this uh, topic. God's will versus your why, and I want to share it. So a lot of us here, we have our plans. We have plans for ourselves. We have the way we already want to be, where we want to go, how we want to go about it. But there's a thing called, called, called God's will. There's a thing called God's will. So David was in the in the, in the fields, right? Taking bush, care of the sheep. Bush. Bush, taking care of the sheep. And he was a good shepherd and he did it diligently. And um, the Bible said he was one anointed. He was, he was chosen by God. David got to the palace and... It wasn't easy being the king. He didn't just ascend the throne with ease. He had to go through many things. He got married. He carried his wife and gave another person. <laughs> you know that kind of thing? He had to even change wife. That kind of He had so many things. But there was something about God's will. And it, it, it was what David aligned himself to. So his wife was aligned to God's will. He didn't say, uh, let me go my way. Let me go back to the sheep. 
let me go back to being a shepherd. He didn't abandon the throne for which he was anointed for and say this thing is getting difficult and went back to the comfortable space. He went, he, he everything he did, he aligned it to the will of God. I've given up. Oh. I know. A lot of us have, <laughs> are, are there, aren't we? A lot of us are there even in our marriages. God has told you to marry the man. Let me use myself as an example. There was a time, ah, I told you by a fact. I've just said it for now. Oh, exactly. this really helped my ministry. But if you said I will help you after two hours or three, I better act back and come back. <laughs> so what are we saying? We, are, we might be at different areas of our life or phases of our life. And then God has given you a will. God has told this is where you, you are to go. And you're going on that road. It doesn't look like it. It doesn't. It's and like, some of you now, like you're saying, why mean. should I be here? My why, the, I, there's a why. This is why I should leave this marriage. I was comfortable in my father's yes, house. This is why I should leave this marriage. You have all your wives. But the instruction that was given to you is go on that path. You are in that office or you're starting that business. There's, the, God told you, do this thing. Now you have act, you've told yourself, why? Why would I be in this business? This business, there's no efficiency to it. It doesn't look good. I beg, I'm tired. What is it? It's not yielding money. It doesn't look like, where is the it money? Doesn't look like it, it doesn't look like it. But God said to David, I wanted him to be king. And it didn't look like it. But David did not, did not choose his wife over God's will. He aligned his wife to God's will. And that was why, right. per time, per time, he, he persevered. Yeah. He got to a point where he had he the opportunity knew. to kill Saul. And he did not. He did not. He, did not. he told them, Don't, nobody should try it. And, understood. Yes. And somebody in his camp said, today God has given you Saul. And that would, have been, that would have been his wife. That would his wife. How many people? He would have let Saul go. How many? How many of say us? Say the truth. Say the truth. Say Today the truth. we are looking in the mirror. For the Peter on it's just said he would have. Me, she would have left me. Peter I would have there. left Peter there. <laughs> Susanna <laughs> says, if it were in today's world, Peter would have Peter been labeled evil. Thank life. you. So what are we saying today? As we look in the mirror, <laughs> let all of us go and ask ourselves if oh, our gosh. wives are aligned with God's will. So that thing God is saying to you, God said, I'll make you a mother of nations. That's what he said to Abraham and to Sarah. No baby. Oh, oh. They were getting old, getting old, getting old. Menopause came. No baby. Abraham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing happened. But his why did not change from his will. Mm. So tonight I urge us all, as we look in the mirror, to ask ourselves if our wives are aligning with God's will. Mm. Praise Jesus. the Lord. Hallelujah. And if it is not, it is a time for us to return to and the say, instruction, God, to the place of first instruction. God help my ministry. ministry. So, Pastor, you now pray for us. And, um, you know, uh, you said something in the course of this program. You said most Christians now, even what they see, you know, it's like beholding Nigeria in the mirror. Mm. What do they see? You know, and you talked here about the importance of self reflection, self examination. Mm. I think I would like to also pray in the direction that everyone, it's not about the picture of Nigeria you see what part do you see yourself in the yeah, picture of nigeria yeah. because when you talk about the tapestry of nigeria each and every one of us is woven mm -hmm. into the tapestry of nigeria mm -hmm. you understand nigeria is not just something on its own it's an entity and you and i and every one of the millions of people that's why you're still here nigerians that's why you're still here we're woven into the that's tapestry. why we're still here yes, that's yes, why we're not in canada yes, yes we're not in america yes we're here so i i would like you also to talk about that because we all should behold you know ourselves in the mirror as it also affects what we are and where we are yes. and who we are what we say mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. our nation nigeria so personally i think we should put up the romans chapter 6 okay chapter 12. romans, romans chapter 12 from verse 6 to 10. 10 and it's going to be from the, the message, message translation so i'll just be putting it i want us to please um, this is our closing okay. scripture, okay. Romans chapter 12, from verse 6 to 10. And it says, Is that is it verse 6 to 10? Okay, I'm verse 6 to 10, yes. Okay, verse 6 to 10. But well, we're putting this small, small. So we want you all to read it. That's we'll why we're trying small, small. to. Put it up get, on the put screen. Put it up on the screen okay, for you. Okay, start reading it there. Okay, it says, if you preach, just preach God's message. Nothing else. If you help, just help. Don't take over. Hmm. Don't take over. If you teach, stick to your teaching. If you give encouraging guidance. 
Be careful that you don't get bossy. If you're put in charge, don't manipulate. Mm. If you're called to give aid to people in distress, just a second. You'll still read it all together yeah, after will. this time. So, okay, continue. If you're called to give aid to people in distress, keep your eyes open and be quick to respond. If you work with the disadvantaged, don't let yourself get irritated with them or depressed by them. Who are the disadvantaged? Is, so, so I remember what we thought, said to you. Who are the disadvantaged? Anyone who is not on your intelligent level, anyone <laughs> who is not who does not understand your English, anyone who doesn't even know the Bible as much as you do, as you do. anyone who is not on the same level with you, knowledge, skill, whatever, prayer life whatever so he says keep a smile on your face love from the center of who you are don't fake it run for your for dear life from evil and hold on for dear life to good they were supposed to finish those it's, it's still we still have like one line because so i think go. i'm gonna read this thing from this thing no no just read all together now okay so from the beginning i'm going to start again romans chapter 12 from verse 6 to 10 if you preach just preach god's message nothing else if you help just help don't take over if you teach stick to your teaching if you give encouraging guidance be careful that you don't get bossy remember don't be the person who when you're guiding people you now end up being bossy you want to tell them the day they will eat cook sleep wake up or let how them, to talk be, to their let husband. them be mirroring off you yes don't don't do that let them see if you're put themselves. in charge don't manipulate if you're called to give aid to people in distress Keep your eyes open and be quick to respond. Ah, wow, that's being sensitive. If you work with the disadvantage, don't let yourself get irritated with them or depressed by them. Keep a smile on your face. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Praise the Lord. Be and so this sums it up. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. Second fiddle means yeah. respect, mutual uh, respect. Uh, don't always and, and don't always be the one who is in the limelight. Yes, that's mutual respect. I'm telling you, so, let other people shine. Yes, be that's mutual quantum. respect. Mm. Don't say, I am see this small girl. You're mm -hmm. you're in a group. This person is your friend. Say, see this small girl. Remember that time. Mm -hmm. See now, this small girl. The person has something to say. You first of all belittle this small girl. When she talks, eh, you wonder if she's an old woman. No. I'm telling you, why, what makes you think? No, you know, that person wonder, is in your you space for exactly. a reason. So you must respect her. Mutual respect is irrespective. Respect that comes irrespective of age, size, class, and what have you. So practice playing second fiddle. So today you may shine. The next day that your friend will shine. Today you're on the cover, uh, on the cover of a magazine or something. You cheer your friend, please. It must not always be you. Praise the Lord. Prayer time. Prayer time. Oh, Hallelujah. today has been wonderful. And we thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. We can't thank you enough for the way you have just anchored today's session. Ah, Father, we come before you as your children, as your baby girls, as your daughters. We prostrate before you and we say thank you for today's word. My Lord and my God, we come to you today. We know that by strength shall no man prevail. We acknowledge, O oh God, that if we cut off from you, we can do nothing. And so today, O oh Lord, we ask in any way we have detached from you, be it in our words, in our thoughts, and in our actions. Today, O oh God, we ask, O oh God, for a replanting. We come back to you, O oh God, like the prodigal son. And we know, O oh God, that you say you will by no means cast us away. Father, tonight, O oh God, we come before you. I present everyone under the sound of my voice, everyone who needs healing. I, in the place of trust, in the place of love, in the place of peace, in the place of forgiveness, in the place of God, King of glory, of respect, in the place of God, King of glory, of, the, of hope. Ah, they need healing. Maybe they no longer see light, but they see darkness. Today, oh God, even in the place of faith, we ask, oh God, my Lord and my God, that your light will shine through. The Bible said that the entrance of God bringeth light. Let your word that has come forth today, O oh God, bring light in dark places. Let it straighten crooked roads. Let it level mountains. Ah, let it fill the ditches. 
Let it bring a rebirth. Let the old give way to the new. Father, today, oh God, let it bring a repositioning. Everyone who has been looked to God as a castaway, who because of experiences, oh God, Jehovah, do not think ah, they are worthy of the throne. Oh God, take their place just like David. The Bible said and David, his father, did not even remember he was his son. He called everyone, but for God, someone would have made a mistake. But when it was time, Samuel said, you will all stand until that young lad comes here. Ah, the Bible said the oil did not flow. That was the only reason Samuel did not make a mistake. Today, oh God, we pray for everyone who has looked at themselves and has been called by a name that God did not call them. Ah, today, let there be, oh God, a renewal of confidence. Let there be, oh God, a renewal of purpose. Let there be a renewal, oh God, of their work with you. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift our nation, Nigeria, before you. Ali Kaseke, Kele Kaseke, we ask, oh God, Jehovah, we thank you first uh, for silencing the drums of war. We thank you for frustrating the plans of the crafty, that their hands of God have not performed the enterprise. We thank you for being God over Nigeria, and we lift our nation before you. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ over our nation, Nigeria. Ali Kaseke, Kele Kaseke, let the blood of Jesus speak over every other blood. By the power in the name of Jesus, let the blood of Jesus speak. Ah, Nigeria, hear ye the word of God. Ah, emerge, emerge, emerge. By the power in the name of Jesus, we frustrate the God every plan of the craft. We decree concerning Nigeria, let the new Nigeria emerge. In Nigeria, oh God, where the leadership of God is of righteousness. Where the people of God fear God. Where the people of God have turned from their wicked ways. Where righteousness rules and the nation is exalted. In the name of Jesus, Nigeria that does not eat our own. We call you forth. We call you forth. We call you forth. By the power in the name of Jesus, Nigeria uh, that flows out our uh, new wine, sweet wine. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, O oh God, for there is peace in this nation. Amen. From yes. the north to the south, east to the west. Yes. Uh, the Bible said that Saul was on his way to Damascus. And he had an encounter with Jesus. The Bible said the scales fell off his eyes. Today we pray for everyone walking in ignorance. Ah, who is under, oh God, any brainwashing, under any master, under any one. Today, oh God, let the scales fall off their eyes. The north to the south, east to the west, let the scales fall off their eyes. In the name of Jesus, let only the counsel of God stand in this nation. By the power in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Lord and my God. Blessed be your holy name forever. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. And so, Father, we lift every troubled heart before you. We pray for peace oh, on every side. We pray for peace on every peace side. We pray for peace on every peace side. In the name of God the Father Amen. and of the Son Amen. and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. For everyone who is sick, Father, we pray for healing. Mm. Let your healing come upon them. Be it physical sickness, oh, emotional, ah, psychological, spiritual, 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 whatever form of Amen. illness, today receive the healing of God by the power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. Blessed thank be your holy name forever. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 I want to quickly um, just say to somebody, go check for the... Um, I think we're, we're going to post it on the Coffee Time page. Mm -hmm. The prayer of Francis of Assisi. Yeah. The song, the prayer, it's something we really should reflect on in this season. So by the time you're looking at yourself in the mirror, you will see yourself for who you truly are. Mm -hmm. A peacemaker, a joy bringer, mm -hmm. so many things. One that God will look at and just be pleased. Mm -hmm. There's a songwriter who says he just wants to make God smile. Imagine if everything um, Onyai has said to us this evening, we begin to truly practice it, not by our own strength, but like she would always say, God help my ministry. But by God's grace, I'm sure in no time we'll be able to behold ourselves in the mirror. Yeah. And when we walk away, we will not forget who we are. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And for the, to this end, I want to put up our remembrance for the day. And our remembrance for the day is very, very poignant. We're going to wait for as many that can put it up 
after we put it up. Yes, because it is a very, very serious matter. And this is what it is. It says, today, I commit to stop confusing what I look like through the eyes of men mm. or what they tell me I look like and instead begin to truly see who I am in God. Amen. I don't know if you've seen me begin to post your commitment. Say today, I commit to stop confusing what I look like. Yes, sir. Confusing what I look like through the eyes of men or what they tell me I look like. And instead, when I look into the mirror, I will begin to truly see who I am in God. In fact, I should probably put that when I look into the mirror. Oh, what do you think? I should put it because it's about yes. the mirror. Yes. So before you even say it, so uh, tell me I look like an instant begin to truly see what I look like. Uh, instead begin to look into the mirror. Yeah. To look into the mirror to truly see who I am in God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mirror. So I'm putting it up back, ladies, to truly see who I am in God. Yes, so today I commit to stop confusing what I look like through the eyes of men or what they tell me I look like and instead begin to look into the mirror to truly see who I am in God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So if you see it, you can begin to post yours so we can put yours up. So to be like a remembrance, you know, it will always be somewhere in the World Wide Web. And of course, you know, we do not just do these things for happenstance, but we do it believing that God is able to just breathe on all that we do. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, Pastor, I want you to make your commitments. As commitment. If I let's say it together, we are here now. We want to go. Today, we commit, we commit to, to stop confusing what we look like through the eyes of men or what they tell us we look like and, and instead begin, begin to look into the mirror to, to truly see who we are in God. Hallelujah. Amen. So you can still keep on posting it. Yeah, and then now God has put us up. That is it. That is it. That is it. As an image. As an image, okay? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Then has put up has can i have other people put up theirs put up theirs put up theirs we truly would like to just see so many people put up there so i'll be i'll be pasting don't worry we're not in a hurry like we said we have the house for ourselves no i'm talking i'm telling you people that we're not going anywhere in a hurry we have the house for ourselves <laughs> so we're going to put up the um francis the prayer of saint francis so it will always be somewhere there online as well so then now god you thank you for putting it up today you commit to stop confusing what you look like through the eyes of men or what they tell you you look like and he said you begin to look into the mirror to truly see who god says you are and who you are in god praise the lord Hallelujah. Susie Annie has put up hers so as we're reading it i'll be putting up the um saint francis so, or you can be reading what Sudan you put. Read it. Today I commit to stop confusing what I look like through the eyes of men or what they tell me I look like and instead begin to look into the mirror to truly see who I am in God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's Amen. just awesome. That's just awesome. Amen. So we have to go now. And before we do, we'll just quickly put up the Francis of Assisi. Yes. So, we'll still put it up on the, um, what do you call it? On the Coffee Times Coffee time page. It's going to be there as a post. It up as a post. So, you'll get to see it. So, thank you very, very much for keeping faith with us today. Uh, for Pastor Yin, this is the same place. Good night. Thank you. We love you. God bless you. God bless you. We appreciate you. God bless you. So, Susie Ani Nena Esosa Tokini Abigail Chingwe. Um, Linda. In fact, I don't know if I can even call everybody. Everybody. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> came. Hey, you know, yeah, no, I want to try this. Nena, how's your ma? Mercy Benefactor. In fact, the list is endless. Sandra. We say thank you very thank much. You. God you. bless you. We need thank you very much. Thank, thank you very you. much. So until next week, by then, Onya will be back to base. 
I will be doing this thing <laughs> from across the, but today we're just glad we can do it together. So we say good night and God, God bless you. you.